What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unsolved Mysteries with Lauren and Christy, the show where we talk about Netflix's new Unsolved Mysteries in a deep dive manner. As always, I am your host, Lauren Ash. I am joined, of course, by my sister, Christy Oxborough. Christy, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm, re- I'm really good. I'm, uh, I'm a- I mean, I'm a mess about kids <laughs> in school. But, of course. Uh, but for the most part, I'm, I'm really good. I'm deep diving just swimming through the lives of these strangers. <laughs> and it turns out I may have missed a calling because I live for it. Full like Jeff Daniels in speed and like, we got our scumbag, you know, <laughs> oh, in the freezer. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's like a dirty Slurpee. Want, we want to try one more time? Let's, you know what? We'll try one more time. Okay. We'll try one more time. All right. Okay. Let's just close those eyes again. One, two, three, clap. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three. So you're saying no? No, it was it was it was off. Really? It sounded great. It sounded great over here. I mean, if you are listening, Mr. Fraser, <laughs> I am <laughs> I am a big fan and I'm very flustered and I don't, I, it's like, I'm, I'm not talking with him right now. <laughs> She's turning so red, so red. I love that I just mentioned that there was a possibility in the grand scheme of the world that Jonathan Frakes may listen to True Crime and Cocktails. And listen, I'm not saying it's not possible. I assumed you'd be Blanche. <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> an overt compliment, but I mean, I do feel like you have a joie de vie no. when it comes to the opposite sex. <laughs> with, with a stopwatch, me in my bailiff's uniform. Of course, which is That's going, which is part. going, which is going to consist of the shirt and tie at the top, and, and, and pajama bottoms because I don't do slacks. So, and I'm just buzzing. I'm so jazzed about, about I'm the different buzzing. ones. I'm so jazzed. I mean, could that be more cute? Christy, she's a science nerd and she's got more facts than you've ever heard. She's gonna take you on a journey today, so get ready because we're gonna be okay. Science. Yeah. I'd be remiss if I didn't reminisce about this. It's about us when we were little kids. This is like, I'm starting <laughs> to think that maybe I do have a future as a hip hop artist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, to Brandy's coming. <laughs> well, let's I, do well, it. Well, I I was worried that if I put it in two separate cups, the second cup would just melt by the time I got to it. So, what's the solution to making that work? A giant frosty mug. There it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's comically large. <laughs> it's 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 almost it's almost twelve inches tall. Yeah. A throat freeze. Oh, Ooh, it's, you ever have that where it gets really cold going down? Um, I am a seasoned Slurpee drinker. <laughs> you are. So, you are. Yeah. So I think I'm just like my throat's been primed. That <laughs> that's a different show. Okay, that's, <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> what I meant to be. <laughs> Christie's doing great. <laughs> So it doesn't matter how this tastes. Uh, the Blanche in me is like ham, like John Ham. Hey yo, <laughs> uh, we've all seen the photos. We know what we're talking about. Uh, Christy, do you have any last words for the people? <sighs> Nothing coherent. Um. <laughs> what I love is that I'm usually the boob who's so drunk at this point. Like literally I'll listen back and I kind of get into this place a little bit. But what I like is that the tables have turned and that makes me happy. Because I had nothing to research this week but a good time. So I'm just like having a good time. Yeah, I'm. (laughs) What I like is, is you Freddie Mercury at your own mic stand. That was like a Steven Tyler, Freddie yeah. Mercury, like playing with the mic stand. It was, oh God, yeah. Gift in my life. What? Um, I also just came up with 
don't be a chucklehead, buckle up instead. (laughs) It was a treasonable offense for the wife of the heir to the throne to have an affair, but no issue if the heir had one, which is a double standard bullshit I don't have time to be angry about right now. Yeah, we yeah we got to yeah. press. We're just going to keep going. Yeah, just know yeah. in general we're ooh yeah angry. yeah we're angry <laughs> we're, we're angry at the monarchy about the patriarchy. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your pal. <laughs> it's your pal. Are you going to say it's your pal? I was going to say it's your bitch. It's your. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you think we're cutting any of this, you're dead wrong. That's what I'm happy to report. (laughs) True crime and quarantine. We drink more drinks than you've ever seen. We take a lot of California breaks. Christy loves Jonathan Frakes. Oh, come on. It's gorgeous. That's That's exactly what we want it to be. Now, Hollywood fun fact. I have a couple of fun facts throughout this. I've given them each a different name because I'm a crazy person today. I love it. Huh. Class, Class act. act. <laughs> not only was this man not authorized to be in the morgue, he then admitted a morgue employee let him stitch up a corpse after an autopsy. Oh my God. Well, there was, I think there was a Christmas movie. There was a Hallmark Christmas movie. There's got to be. Wasn't there one where like a nutcracker came to life or something? Oh, yes. It was played by Barry. Soldier. He was played by Barry Watson. I believe it was a very nutty Christmas starring Melissa Joan Hart. <laughs> Why would I have even continued talking? Of course you would have known which one it was. He was a large part of my sexual awakening. Okay, you know what? Forgive me, yeah. but I think it has to be said. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't say that he captained the ship, but he was definitely a crewman. (laughs) I just like the idea that for some reason, there is a pair of 26 foot tall (laughs) true crime and cocktails statues. And for some reason, they've they've dressed each of us half nude. I don't know why this would happen. I don't know where, I don't know how, but it somehow makes sense, you know? And I would like to be clear, that is not fan art that we want. We are not interested in it. I don't need it. Please stand down, artist. Statues. Stand down. (laughs) Statues of us, 26 feet tall, clothed. Yes. Sure. But if you could like raise my tits a little bit and shrink my ass a little bit. (laughs) What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of True Crime and Cocktails. Famous. That's not. No, that's not what we're doing anymore. (laughs) Ah! This is already going great. I don't know. I'll just end up being like fucking cookies or something. (laughs) Cookies plural is kind of amazing, though. Oh. Do you want to say goodnight to the people? Good night, Dave Grohl. <laughs> Jerry Lewis. Lady. Hey, lady. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of how long it's been since then, or if it's this new mob energy I've got going on. But now, like, I couldn't speak to him. And he wasn't even here anywhere. But now I'm going to say... Frakes, call me. <laughs> I can talk about beauty and art. <laughs> and then and then just as quickly as she came, she's gone again. <laughs> I like that she just, yeah. she flies in, drops yeah. a nugget of wisdom and, and flitters away. Oh, um, nuggets. <laughs> Case in point. It's almost the relationship. Of Pollux, Castor Pollux, and Pollux <laughs> Troy. We can face off. Am I but, tying your shoe at the plane? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the next 50. Oh, God, now I feel like it's my 50th birthday. It's not. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> not even Thank close. Thank you for saying it that way. And when yeah. that means you come up with some statement, like maybe you're sexually attracted to Sam, the patriotic eagle, Muppet. 
I want you to feel free to say it. You know, this is the safe space. Oh, I don't know if there's a Muppet I'm into. Really? Not really? I mean, I mean, emotionally. <laughs> Physically, no, but like emotionally, oh, oh shit, I'd probably let Fozzie spoon me. <laughs> oh, I mean, who's left? Kermit. I would date Kermit. Oh, well, I don't think Miss Piggy would let you. No, no, no. Be I, mean, I would be a nightmare. Never, I would never do that to Piggy. No. You know what I mean? Hogs before that. frogs. Hogs before oh! frogs. Oh, that was oh, nice. On. This oh, that show, was nice. This show's a really beautiful thing, dear listeners. This is the second annual holiday hootenanny episode of the show. If you haven't listened to the original holiday hootenanny, you gotta stop what you're doing. Go back and give it a listen. Um, it was our, our Christmas special last year. Christy got blotto for lack of a better term, which was, <laughs> it, it was nice for me because I had been yeah. so drunk in so many episodes to that point. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, it was nice to be the more sober of the two for a first, uh, for, for first, for first doing great. Um, but this year we decided to kick things up a notch. Uh, for those of you, I think everybody knows about our newfound enjoyment with cosplay, obviously over Halloween. Yes. We did two of them. And uh, we did, of course, our, our coordinating Star Trek The Next Generation costumes where I was Data, Christy was, was Riker. And then we surprised each other uh, for the Halloween uh, episode where I was yeah. Pajama Bailiff and she was, of course, Cookies, two of Christy's uh, alter egos. And so for this, we decided we would, would secretly choose a character from Love Actually and dress up as it. Now, what's amazing is, is yeah. that we have chosen the same character. And if you're we listening have. and not watching, the reveal is, is that we're the little Spider-Man wise man from the, uh, the nativity play chip uh, and blank Gale. <laughs> gains. I don't know who those people are. Okay. <laughs> Which is why I said the chipmunks or the strippers. Either okay. Way. Okay. Pass. Yeah. Joanna. Uh, <laughs> There it is. Uh, Joni Mitchell. Oh, shit. It's Emma Thompson's character. Yep. What is her fucking name? Uh, she's such a... Bitch? <laughs> what's, what's a female name for bitch? Ooh. According to the world. <laughs> <laughs> Not us. If she was here right now, she'd film us and call the police. Karen. There it is. Uh, to right. me, I always stand by that it's also important to get your yayas out. You know what I mean? Like to get oh, you like a yeah. hard party. And even if you're not a drinker or whatever, still having a hard party, getting into that like energy where you're just like, we're going to yep. go and have fucking fun no matter what is important. Yes. And my dress was so short. My yaya was absolutely out. <laughs> Three. Two, one. one. Happy Woo! New Year! Woo! Should old acquaintance be forgotten and never know the words? <laughs> we're gonna oh. talk about more things because we're a couple of nerds. Oh, I like that a lot, right? Oh, that was nice. Thank you so much. Hey, cheers. Hey, all you true crime fans, listen up because we got a big announcement. That's right, season four of True Crime and Cocktails is coming your way July 19th. Serial killers. We got them. Unsolved mysteries. We got them. Famous cases. We got them. And starting this season, we got a whole bunch of new episodes too. Prosecutor profiles, missing files, and more. Featuring appearances by Blanche, Cookies, Psychologist Hat Lauren, and possibly Pajama Bailey. These episodes take longer than my ma takes to make a Sunday meal. Yeah, his ma's eggplant parm is out of this world. New episodes of True Crime and Cocktails drop every Tuesday. So set an alarm or something, you schmuck. We're supposed to tell him to subscribe. Marone. Hi there, my name is...
name's Larry Bird. That's Bird with a Y, not like the basketball player. This here's my brother, Bert. You're welcome. If there are two things in life that Bert and Larry are passionate about, it's selling cars and true crime podcasts. Well, I think if you know me, there's a third thing on that list. What's that? And it's, and it's bitches. Excuse me, of course. Also, we love the bitches. Uh, except, of course, for my ex-wife, Donna. Uh, Donna, you can uh, sit on it and spin. May she rot. I thank you very much. But I mean, really, nice bazongas on that one. They were nice. They were nice. That is true. I get why you stayed with them. Thank you very much for that. Now, like I was saying, there's one thing that we're passionate about, and that is True Crime Podcast. We like to listen to women tell us about uh, about crime. Uh, but the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be, is the True Crime and Cocktails gals. What I wouldn't give. Five minutes with Blanche. Five. Heck yeah. I only need two. There he is. That's my guy right there. Right there. Uh, So if you can't trust Bert and Larry Bird, then who the heck can you trust? Listen to True Crime and Cocktails. New episodes come out every Tuesday. And if you're looking for somebody to take a car off your hand, maybe something that's been involved in a motor accident, moving a body, we don't ask no questions. Right, Bert? The only question we ask, how much backseat space you need. Heck yeah. That's right. You know, I lost 40 pounds. Atkins diet. Not in a million years did I think I was going to lose weight eating bacon and cheese. You know what I'm saying? But it's been a, it's been a GD lifesaver. Literally. I'll say this. It's Donna's loss. Thank you, Bert. God damn it. I love that woman. Shit. Reporting for True Crime and Cocktails, I am not Spanish. (laughs) (laughs) I like that this went from pennies into full math and dividends. It's an investment. (laughs) Just like listening to this podcast. Because if you listen long enough, we're bound to get to the case. (laughs) We'll get there. But the problem is, is that you could easily open all of these things, do something to it, put your dick in it or something, and then close it up again. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just calling it like I see it. Oh, he could have absolutely fucked a jar of facial cream. Right? Mm. But then I think too much would come out. Why? But he might have just placed it in there. Like he could have just placed it and then removed it. Oh, I assumed he like went... I assume once he got in, he couldn't stop himself from completing. I don't think that this is about, I don't think this is for pleasure. I think that this is just for, for hijinks. So it's like, he wants to like, oh yeah. Now like my, my dick sweats in her, on her face. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I think. that the, the Okay. So it was like a playful tea bag. Yeah. With a little okay. bit, but, it, but, but not with good intentions. Mm-hmm. Shit. Do you have access to a black light? I do. <laughs> I know we're not going to get into it. I'm just going to say whether I should or not. We we know about the family drama and we've chosen a side. (laughs) We absolutely have. If I want anything in my obituary, (laughs) it's one of our five-star reviews. (laughs) (laughs) I was just going to say, I wouldn't mind something from an ex-lover saying (laughs) saying what i like is you, you're like something something lovely and personal into the heart i'm like give me the review oh no i didn't mean lovely into the heart i meant she gave a great blowy <laughs> <laughs> not deliberate but it worked out somehow right oh yep. it's kind of like us in general it's the true creme and cocktails <laughs> way yeah exactly there's lots of value in film even if it's not a perfect film and in, there's very few perfect films in my opinion, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That Jurassic is a perfect Park. film. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few. Yeah. There's a few. Speed. But anyway, there's a couple. Speed. Perfect the original film. Overboard. Yes. Oh. Because you know, I may have failed as a husband. I may have failed as a, as a notary. I may have failed mm-hmm. as a volunteer firefighter. Don't forget the pottery class. I may have failed as a potter also. But if I can go to my deathbed, knowing that I 
made the difference in the life of my baby brother. Yeah. That's it. That's worth the weight in gold, Bert. That's all I've ever wanted, you know? That's all I've ever wanted. Can it up inside like it's soup, Bert. You can't can your feelings like a soup. No, let it boil. Hey, buddy, let it boil. Put it in the pot. Put it in the pot. Let it boil. Let it boil over if it needs to, buddy. Minestrone, tomato, yep. Yep. chicken noodle, yep. bone broth. There it is. Yep. There it is. I like you working your steps, buddy. Harry yep. bird around the bend. So, of course, there is the titular track around the bend. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, we have, oh, I'd love to see that, Bert. That was my first single from the album. That was, of course, written about my baby brother, Bert. Uh, and uh, his uh, very long-standing crush on Goldie Hawn. Yeah. Then, of course, I have a song called A Girl Named Vanessa. Yeah. Vanessa. I never met another girl like Vanessa. She was mm -hmm. actually a gal that I dated in kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, okay, the rest of the album tracks are Caught Me Red-Handed, Naked as a Jaybird, Rocky Mountain Lie, Lost and Flounder, I'm Dreaming of a Hot Dog, I think that one's my favorite. The Ballad of a Barber Named Troy Davis. <laughs> D-O-N-N-A. And then, of course, Just a Hot Dog Dreaming of a Bun. Dreaming, I'm dreaming of a hot dog for me. It's got a, it's just a very, it's got a little, it's a little bit peppy. You know what I mean? It's like, I am yeah. dreaming of a hot dog. I'd like to have a snack. I don't care if it's processed meat. I don't care about heart attack. I'm dreaming of a hot dog. I want one for myself. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to take it off the shelf. Then I do do about a, like a, a six to seven minute mouth trumpet solo. You know, because I did work on the mouth trumpet for the album. I'm going to spell the word for you. You tell me how you'd pronounce it. Ready? Okay. Okay. I'm going to even write it down. Yep. yep. T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E. -E. Treaties? See, I would say treaty. Oh, sure. I think, but I think that may be me being en français. Oh, yeah. I, I did. Uh, shitty in en français. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, uh but uh, I think, but it, still, you said it closer to how I did because I think that the way they wanted me to say it was treatise. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Some people were critical of his photos. Really? And I said, "Get out of town. Go take a bus." Go take a bus to the to the country and and buy some jams, cause that's something else. <laughs> that's something else going on there. It's hot go, as hell. Come on, go take a bus out of town and go buy some jams. It's probably now my favorite thing you've ever said. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to this very special episode of True Crime and Cocktails. We're so glad that you're here. This, of course, is. Holiday Hoot Nanny 3, Tokyo Drift, aka our third annual Holiday Hoot Nanny episode. Christy Oxborough, how you feeling over there? Uh, I'm feeling a little rustly. Uh, my my tentacles are a bit rustled. Um, you're a bit rustle rustle branding. You're, they you're are rustling? a little filled with uh, they're filled with those air things, so it's uh, very rustly over here. Um, but. I could not be happier uh, that Tokyo Drift made it into the title. Listen, I'm, I've am i become obsessed with it. I won't let it go. I think it's a funny bit, and uh, it is what it is. And if we get a cease and desist letter, so be it. Then I say we're doing something right. Is it weird to say, I think I'd be honored. Oh, I'd be damn honored. 
Oh, but would are you they be flesh? happy? Is it out of flesh? flesh? <laughs> oh. Rose, this is a horrific question. I know. I don't like it, but somehow, somehow. Oh my God, flesh. Oh, <laughs> I guess real bitten over the flesh mitten. Like when I'm at, when I'm out, I could cover my flesh mitts. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to go with the cookies because A, I'm going to eat that fucking dough. I know it's not good for me. I know I could die. I know all of these things, but part of the enjoyment <laughs> of the flavor is the risk. <laughs> Have I ever confessed to you in in this confessional booth that is our show? Yep. Oh god, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I've never had a Big Mac. I'm 41 years old and I've, I've never known had you a Big Mac. since birth. Yeah. And if there's anything that we share a love of, yeah, it is patron saint Ronald McDonald and his franchises. Yep. I am mm -hmm. truly to the core of my being shook. Out of you fear. Had a filet of fish? I have not. Christy Lynn. I mean. don't even know what to say. Fuck. Ne I've never had a McChicken. I don't even know. I don't even understand it. Why? 2023, year of Mickey D's. Oh, I like that. You're welcome. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Sponsor us. <laughs> this is bringing me into a question that I shouldn't ask. Move on, Lauren. Move on from this. But I can't. Nope. Alas, I can't. Yep. I don't think that any of the McDonald Land characters are sexual. I want to make that very clear. 100%. Yeah. They're innocents, but I think the Hamburglar fucks. Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe he's into underground sex clubs. I don't know. <laughs> as long as it's all consenting and no one gets hurt, Hamburglar, go with God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so in the underground sex club that involves McDonald's characters, <laughs> is it like a play place? <laughs> Someone's, you know, boning in a ball pit somewhere. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Oh, my God. That's brilliant. All things are off. Oh, Grimace is a daddy. Limits. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> come on. If we're going to start sexualizing them, which I want to preface yeah. this saying I don't typically. But this is like the sure. Muppet conversation where I was talking about <laughs> what Muppets I would date. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, to me, it's like. Ronald is like the Kermit. He feels like he's a good guy. You know what I mean? He's the guy that you should sure. try and date. But there's the oh. bad boys involved. And like, Hamburglar, for sure a bad boy. He's the guy who plays in a band that doesn't call you back. You know what I mean? But it's like, the second he texts you at 11 p.m., meet me at the play place, you're like, let me get my themed handcuffs and go. But then also he has, uh, he does my exams. So of course. Seen, so he's seen <laughs> South Mouth. <laughs> What's wrong with me that you say two holes and I don't even, it takes me like a full two minutes to get to mouth. That's really. What's wrong with me that I so quickly said South Mouth and so that's what we call it. Because when you said um, my doctor just showed up at the thir third one, you went on to later explain, I think he was maybe kind of wanting to just be present because there had been an issue the second time. Where do I go? Oh, he wanted to see your insides. What's wrong with me? And then I was like, why wouldn't he? He's already seen every part of me. Like, gross. <laughs> do you know about Roman Reigns? I don't. You should. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> choked on my own saliva there. <laughs> Um, I'm doing a quick, oh my God. <laughs> uh huh. Got it. Got yeah. it. I just like that hearing you say, I'm going to present immediately. I was, I thought of like animals in the jungle, um, like a peacock presenting its tail for the ladies, sure. you know, I yeah. think, I think baboons show their butts or something, don't they? Thank you for baboons. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Say it. 
Yep. I, well, I would say, I would say, um, baboons, but you just really sped it along. Baboons. It was like B apostrophe B for, for you. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I would normally say baboons. I don't. <laughs> right. Baboons. Oh, I guarantee at this rate they're going to be like, yes, more of more of this poo energy. <laughs> I just, you know, I always know when I'm unhinged, but it's <laughs> rare that you're my kind of unhinged and it is happening tonight. I'm so chaotic right now. I love that I've talked about how to keep your vagina young, my yeah. fear of becoming a spinster, uh, <laughs> the statistics on getting married for the first time over yeah. 45. <clears throat> I mean, we really banged a lot out in 15 minutes. Well, I assume the brain is like the vagina, and if you don't use it, you lose it. Christy, do you want to say goodnight to the people? Happy birthday, Paul Rudd. Good night, my ever-aging vagina. <laughs> when I was at the studio. Uh-huh. Recording with the band. <laughs> I... <laughs> Couldn't be happier that yeah. your birthday led to this revelation. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm. I feel like everybody on who's listened to the show would know. But if you don't know, uh, for my birthday this year, I I hired a band and I fronted the band and I put on a, a yeah. show, a rock concert of cover songs. Yeah. And uh, the band was so great and they were so lovely. And the the one gentleman said, "Do you write music?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, but like I don't." ever play it for anybody like I just write it at home or whatever and he's like well if you ever want to work on music like I'd love to hear it so I went over there a month or so ago and played him my songs and he was like that one that song is good and it's close like it's close to being where you need it to be let's work on it so for the last so then I went back and we we kind of worked on it a little bit together and then last week we went in and recorded with the whole band. And I got to tell you, I beamed the whole time. At one point I caught myself smiling too big, you know? I was ah. like, they're going to think you're creepy. Like, don't like tone it down. Like, not, don't show so many teeth. You know what I mean? Like, hey, like you said to me, don't stop yourself. You're right. You're right. Let the joy I guess be there. I just, I'm glad I didn't catch eyes with any of them. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, I'm glad yeah. that there was like a barrier where they didn't see me like literally looking like, you know, like a creepy doll. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, today I went back and I was recording the vocals for my original song. We've also done a cover song and I'm not going to say what the song is yet because I want it to be a bit of a surprise. Of but um, we were recording the vocals for my song. Uh, we're going to have one more day of, of doing some uh, work on that. And then it's going to be mastered. And then the song's going to be ready. So anytime I ever have an idea for like a movie or a script I'm writing, she always yeah. sends me ideas for casting, which is very helpful. Uh, Cause you know, she knows casting is my main. You're it, so good at it. Thing. I can't believe I haven't pushed to try and do it for a living because I, I you would kill. You oh would my kill. God. Because I like organizing things in their right places. Yeah. Fuck. That makes sense. <laughs> well, you know what else casting is notorious for having? Hot man. Binders. Oh, yeah. And who is his childhood crush? E.T. E.T. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's someone for everyone. everyone. There's someone for everyone. I'm just getting a little sensitive because I made a video about having a light, slight crush on Chewbacca. And then people were talking about it being bestiality. And I take offense to that because Chewbacca, he's more of a man than he is a beast. He's more of man than an animal in my opinion and i think the same although i don't want to gender et because i don't know that we were sure of it i don't know <laughs> you make picking promos so easy for me. <laughs> he was more man than beast uh, yep those delicate piano player fingers very long, very delicate. Plus, there's that one that lights up. And I don't think I need to tell you. <laughs> Might be nice going up the chute. <laughs> Turn you into a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> oh, 
We Light them up, 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 <laughs> light them up, up, up. Halley's Comet, a short period comet which was last visible from Earth in 1986. Halley's Comet is visible from Earth every 75 to 79 years, and it is expected to be visible again in 2061. Oh. And if somehow we are still doing this show <laughs> <laughs> in 40 years. <laughs> I'm going to force us to just, that week will be a rerun of this episode. <laughs> we'll do enough by then. <laughs> oh my God. Oh God. I hope we're not. I say that with peace and love, but wow. 40 years. Oh my God. In 2061, I better be doing all of about fuck all. I was going to say, we're going to be in our 80s. I think it's over. Like, I think, I think 65, we retire. That's still oh, I... 25 years <laughs> for me. An account came up for me on Instagram. I, I don't follow. Um, and it was a picture of David Duchovny in his prime that I had oh. never seen before. That's rare. And it was the cover of Playgirl magazine. <laughs> oh this feels like something you had to know i had no idea and i i fumbled my phone as i was frantically googling <laughs> david to cuff me playgirl the first thing that comes up is an ebay link to a copy of it and i was like when do does i it arrive <laughs> i know i was like do i just hit order and then i was like no hold on look for some more information Anyway, long story short, what I've come to learn is he did not appear nude. So you didn't place or no. <laughs> I would love to see that, Herbert. Uh, it's in my head always. It uh, lives in yeah. my head all the time. Like I will just silently start chuckling to the point where, like, as silent as I can be. Um, but like my whole body is moving and my husband is like, oh, what? Because he thinks it's something I'm scrolling on my phone. It's not. It's because I either hear you singing that or I hear Vanessa, like Vanessa. <laughs> I never met another girl like Vanessa. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a sickness. Uh, we will literally take anything that they have to give. Other than maybe a slap in the face. You know what I mean? Anything else I'm Somehow, interested Somehow, I sadly think I take that. <laughs> well, if it's from Grimace and it's in the suit, it would be adorable. <laughs> the thought of drinking a, a purple milkshake that's supposed to be in some way representative of Grimace freaks me out to a level that I I can't. It does feel like, are we drinking his blood? His like, jizz. are we drinking his... Oh, <laughs> his jizz! You went blood, I went jizz. I thought we'd go the same somehow. Yeah, no. Uh, you mentioned Skinner, a.k.a. Mitch Pileggi. He was, of course, none other than Sam Campbell, a.k.a. Mary's dad on Supernatural. That's right. That's Who, right. Uh, uh, also was on uh, Walker. Oh, okay. The new, the new Walker, which I didn't get through all of it yet. He just has a real daddy vibe in X-Files. He does. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking... <laughs> I'm thinking him from Supernatural or Walker. Uh, yep. yep. He's going to let you know when you've been bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in your world over there? I read fairy smut now. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to tell them. I mean, you said this to me earlier before we started. This yeah. is hockey cards all over again, because if you told me <laughs> two weeks ago, that I was going to be upset that my book about the man with wings eating a woman out at a dinner table hadn't arrived yet. I'd be like, that's insanity. But that is absolutely the last week of my life. I like that you went for it. And you know what? I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to say anything, but you know what? This is just who she is now. So yeah. Oh, it's, I say this with love, but it's who, you, it's who you've always been. <laughs> We're recording this so early in the day that yeah. my hair is damp. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's something about it that feels, I don't know, it feels like loose. It feels like I've I, a rebirth, you hey. know? Because your hair is wet from the canal? 
Is that what we're? <laughs> birth canal. Oh my god! I meant like maybe like a baptism, but I I like oh. the idea that I I've, I've come fresh out the shoot. I've I've <laughs> slid out the shoot and into this record, which has been a real, a real thorn in my paw, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. I normally hear thorn in my side. I like that you've gone <laughs> as though you're a Lion King. That you've this is this the circle of life. <laughs> this um, is my first uh bag of worms since bag of worms? It might be. You can take the girl out of season one, but you can't take the season one out of the girl. Like I don't when's the last time I bag of worms? Thank you for using it <laughs> as a verb. Like it's a great quote. I don't even I know. I like to change it up. Yeah, you know? I do. It's our catchphrase. I can use it however I see <laughs> it. Wasn't accurate the first time I used it. And so I'm going to push it further. And I love that. I love that. Yeah. Yep. Look, it's where I get my yayas today. It's where you, where you get them or where you get them out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I uh, I love so much that in reference to you making it a catchphrase, whatever you wanted, you did it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, before we get into it, because we're going to jump in fast because there's a lot to get through. What you drinking yeah. over there? Uh, well, I've got a water as a backup because uh, I got a lot of things to say out loud. So I need to keep it wet. Nope. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I need to keep it wet. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I meant my voice. So instead of giving them a large sum of money or a house, James' father made a down payment on a small farm outside Crete, Indiana, and expected Lynetta and James to work the land themselves. <laughs> However, neither had any farming experience nor the money to hire any help. So they often struggled. Christy, do you want to say goodnight to the people? <laughs> For reasons I'm not 100% sure of. First one that came to my head. Good night, John Stamos. <laughs> Good night, Dave Coulier. I couldn't even do 10 for a 10 day trip. No, because I'm always like, oh, I'm going to spill. And <laughs> my spill. <laughs> Well, you never know when you're going to be eating a plate of spaghetti in a hotel in your underwear. <laughs> oh. oh, God, I didn't mean spill. Well, I didn't mean me. I I guess I guess I meant my nethers. <laughs> this this is it. This is the sign that uh, we've done too much too soon. We've done a lot in two weeks. Yeah, we've been we've been on a pace that is uh, I don't think sustainable for us long term. Is what I think I'm learning. Other than that, we're just free balling it, free balling it. Maybe it's not for the best. It's uh, we're You're like doing this great. when it's either early or late. Yep. Or in the middle times. I'm starting to think maybe we can't blame the time. I don't think the time has anything to do with it. <laughs> What's uh, time got to do, got to do with that? So what you're saying is, this is just our personalities. Correct. Watermelon sugar, high noon. Come <laughs> on. High noon. That is, you partner with Harry Styles. I don't know what else to say or just license the song. There's also parody laws. Look, call us because that's brilliant. The whole time. The whole time. The whole, the whole time. time? <laughs> You're born Robin Williams and you grow up to be Sally Field. I get it. I get it. Yep. If you if you live long enough, you become the villain. He's going through it right now in the best way possible. Like he's having a revolution is what he's having. I double checked his last movie prior to this was 2018. So I, he did take oh, some wow. time off. I yeah. think he wanted to to you know be a dad and all of that, which is a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, I yeah he's he is he's he, we're in the Renaissance of Ryan. Ryanaissance. Oh, there it is. Things I respond to in the original <laughs> Jurassic Park. One, Laura Dern's outfit. Two, the way 
uh, Laura Dern and Sam Neill react when they first see their dinosaurs. It's it warms my heart. Uh, three, oh, that lady T Rex. I love her so much. She's a strong, powerful woman. She takes no shit. And we need her in the rest of the movies, it turns out. We do. We do. And then, of course, like for Jeff Goldblum. Wait, and when does Sam Neill scarring the child come in? No, you're right. You're right. Three scarring of the child, four the dinosaur, five Jeff Goldblum. Wow. Yeah. That shocks me. Which one was the M. Night Shyamalan uh, one with Maki? I don't know. That I, I think, think that si- one... Signs was the... Signs oh, was yeah. Mel Gibson, wasn't it? Yes, you're Th- right. Because Signs was else. like 99, early 2000s-ish. That's, that's right. The one with Maki was like, hey, everybody, there's something in the air. We don't know what it is. <gasps> on the train. They're on the train traveling. Zoe Deschanel is in it. Fuck. I did Remember? actually see that recently. What was that called? Well, the happening the happening is that right i think so i like that you got it from me saying there's something in the air 37 years ago the movie clue debuted oh my word so i thought it might be fun if off the top of your head you had to do your best summary of the movie explain it to me like i've never seen it i have of course but i i just thought it would be fun to hear you uh hit as many points as you can i'm also willing to time you if you'd like i'd like the time i was going to ask if there was a timing element clue is a movie based on the famous board game of the same name in which you're trying to determine who murdered mr body in what room and with what weapon and this movie does not disappoint at the beginning a cavalcade of different characters arrive at a very creepy house hill house that's on top of a hill. Uh, It's not just a clever name. One by one they arrive, the dogs barking, snarling, uh, each of them clearly a very different character from the next. There's Professor Plum, Mr. Green, Miss Scarlet, uh, Mrs. Peacock, Mrs. White, uh, did I say Colonel Mustard? Um, And they all arrive where they're greeted by the butler Wadsworth. I'm the butler, sir. I, I'm the butler is in charge of the, uh, the kitchen and the dining room. Uh, I'm wasting too much time up to, up top. The point is, very soon Mr. Body comes in, and they realize that each of them have been being bribed by him because he has their secrets. They immediately get angry. Some of them try and start a fight. The door, the, the lights go out. When they come back in, oh my goodness, the gifts that they've all been given when they arrive, which are each different murder weapons, someone has used them, and Mr. Body is face down on the floor. Oh my God, he's dead. Or is he? Through a series of hijinks and uh, crazy shenanigans, this team manages to murder everyone who sets foot in the house that evening, including Mr. Body, who was not dead in that moment, but eventually is. And it is a romp and a half with three separate endings that also include the FBI, um, uh, communism, and more than anything else, everyone's willingness to cover their own ass with lies. That's right. Clue, ladies and gentlemen, a comedy romp for the ages that you're not going to regret. I didn't do what the, the task was, but I feel like I sold the shit out of it anyway. You still had a minute 13 left. Damn it. But you were attracted to um, Castor Troy. Yes. Not Nicolas Cage. Correct. Much like I'm attracted to Heath Ledger's Joker. Correct but not Jared Leto's Joker. I was just going to earnestly say, <laughs> I mean, really, I've I've always loved a bad boy. Stop it. And you have. Know, do you know what I mean by bad boy? I mean Jake from California Dreams because he wore, <laughs> he wore a leather jacket. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. yeah. Reporting for this holiday true crime episode turned Lego love fest, I'm Christmas Oxborough. <laughs> Yeah. What it is, is I've worn a very special shirt. And yeah, it's a Fox Mulder from the X-Files shirt. And I know what you're thinking, why? And it's because of the recent news events oh. surrounding surrounding the aliens. Show me the bodies. Show me the bodies. <laughs> 
what I love is this man is like, he's, he's, you know, part of these classified programs. Christie's still not buying it. I was like, this is it. Finally, finally, it's going to happen. I'm going to get her to, I'm going to have her ear about aliens. And what I'm hearing is not so fast, Ash. Wait a second. You're saying the only way that you're going to believe in aliens is if I somehow, and I love that I pulled me into this. I somehow get to arrange like a personal viewing of these alien bodies. First of all, if you think I get an opportunity to see alien bodies in person that you're not going to get yourself in there anyway, I'm going to be right. like- They clearly would have been involved. Yes. Yeah, the second they're like, you want to see the aliens? I'd be like, can I get two passes? Passes like a fair stuff. And then I was like, yeah. what would I name a boat? And then I was like, I don't know, the Stardust Filibuster? Oh, I want to get on board that. Right? I like that a lot. Yeah. Oh, mine would be dirty. Gargantuan Promise. Gargantuan Promise? Oh, God, I'd be the one that would be like, come aboard or something stupid. You know C-U-M? I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, of course. Um, oh God. And then you're um, like, oh my God, they misspelled a board. It says come abroad. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm talking, this thing is like four to five centimeters in diameter. Bless Two and a half ish inches. Bless you for that way. I was about, I was genuinely going to go, oh, that's like two loonies wide minimum. Loonies. Nobody. I like things that, in coins <laughs> until now. And what I like is that that's so Canadian. Not only is it not yeah. uh, using the metric system, but it's using our currency. Oh, God, I want, I think I want the name of my biography to be Dietary Misadventure. <laughs> it's certainly our lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would like a Dietary Misadventure. You uh, know what I bought? Oh, I'd love to hear it. These marshmallows. Yeah, that have milk chocolate in the center. No shit. Yeah. So that way, now again, what campfires am I going to? Doesn't matter. The point is, is that then when you roast it, you put it on the graham cracker. Got, got, got. First of all, that, thank you so much. Or got, 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 got. Yeah. I mean, bees are like, I just want to smell the pretty flowers. Yep. Let me smell the pretty flowers. And wasps are like, a sweet thing you know like the gross like some sort of gross yep. guy that you're terrified of because you're trying to walk somewhere alone at night oh yeah oh yeah they'll bees they'll... are gonna give you money and put you in an uber wasps are gonna make you want to put your keys between your fingers like wolverine <laughs> just like that you're speaking in podcast <laughs> promos which i love that was amazing I, I think at some point in my life i'm like pick yourself uh, do do yourself a favor and just <laughs> just a 20 second rant about something that I can go oh and cut that yeah that would be great I don't want to show you a photo because I, I feel like I'm going to know what your reaction will be but I have been screaming at you for weeks show me the bodies show you the bodies so no god that's <laughs> a fucking cake or something <laughs> <laughs> can we get the netflix is it cake people on the case we need to know i just envision a slime of some sort and i a slime yeah. what do you think these are swamp things how dare you a slime i don't even know what to say there's to some sort of a coating on its body a coating what is on like our atmosphere versus theirs or something it keeps them Fresh? I don't know. It keeps them in some. <laughs> I don't know. I've never thought of my aliens being ones that are just constantly walking around covered in ooze. But listen, I I guess I shouldn't yuck your yum if that's what you, <laughs> how you think they what present. I, that's not what I want them to be. That's just, I want them to be tiny, adorable little things. And dry. No slime. Yeah. Oh, I, I prefer... I, most things to be dry i i'm i don't want to put you on the spot it. i yes. don't want to put you on the spot but at some point yeah if there was any way you could do like an artist's rendering of what you think yeah an alien looks like i'll do one too 
And maybe we can sure. just compare. You know what I mean? Like, what does your mind's eye see? And I think when we look at those, I think very quickly it's going to come out why one of us has an affinity towards this and one of us doesn't. That's what I'm hearing. Correct. Um, I'm up for this challenge. You know, more man on man as opposed to zone defense. <laughs> Thank you very much. Exactly. That's a, that's a Timothy Oliphant quote, actually. That's right. I remember Hot that. As hell. Hot as hell. We that's that's one of the our crossover people. That we both have crushes on. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hold all. That makes sense. Duffel? What the fuck's a duffel? Oh, I don't know. Every day I'm duffeling. I got nothing. <laughs> and then I also say gym bag exclusionary. Some of us don't go. <laughs> <laughs> A hundred percent of this podcast. Yes. One hundred percent of these podcast <laughs> hosts do not go to the gym. Then you said DNA on a hat. And I said, hat jizz. I'm sorry. I, I just, I promised I would read them all. And I apologize. Wild mountain time or something, which has, uh, who's the 50 shades guy. Jamie Dornan. There it is. That guy. Um, I love that 50 shades was the only thing I could think he was in and I've never seen it. Um, him and Emily Blunt and, oh, fuck. <laughs> this is another pussy throat cancer, but <laughs> madman, um, January Ma Jones, madman, uh, hog of a cock. <laughs> Is it John Hamm? <laughs> I guess Ben's eyes just translate constantly to like that's all people stare at. I those guess sparkly panda baby doe eyes. Everyone's like, bam, I know those eyes. They're from He Super showed Super. me a picture on his phone at one point of himself doing something. And I said, you know, if you weren't my brother, I would find you very attractive. <laughs> but that's disgusting. So it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't make the needle move for me. But yeah, I think it is. You know what it is? I think it is that heartthrob phenomenon that it's like when you mm -hmm. look like a rejected American girl doll. Yes. Um, you know, I'm trying to like, I'm rocking my brain for more of those old Dina Jonah Burns, but you know what I mean? It's like, I guess that's his, his cross to bear. Bless yeah. his heart. Yeah. Look, he can't help that he has anime eyes. <laughs> His eyes are in a never-ending sparkle. Uh, he doesn't listen to this show anymore. <laughs> oh, he sure does. And I guarantee you he's going to listen to this one. <laughs> I would apologize, Ben, but uh, <sighs> if you want an apology, you have to come get it. <laughs> what the fuck oh, my that? God. <laughs> what I love is that she gets so confident, so confident here through she Zoom. Does. And then, boy, oh, boy, oh, in person, the, the confidence is going to dip. Oh, dip. dip. Absolutely, 100%. That's a wild thing to say to anybody. Wow. I mean, that's the internet, baby. I mean, as someone who just got very sexually aggressive with Ben Feldman via this podcast, <laughs> it's wild that I would say anything to be like, I can't believe they talk to people like that. How dare they? Yeah, you really did get pretty up on your high horse for a woman who just low-level sexually <laughs> harassed one of my closest friends. <laughs> hey, first of all, first of all, uh, men have been doing it to us for so long. Oh, it's yeah. our turn. It's and you know what? <laughs> I'll tell you this right now, and I can say yeah. it with confidence. No one will love anything more about this than Ben Feldman. So you're in good You're in. You've chosen the right target. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's going to make those anime eyes sparkle even more. There you go. Yeah. Two weeks ago on the show, we did talk about uh, what we thought aliens may look like if they exist. Um, if you ask me, knowing they exist. Uh, <laughs> hashtag Tom was right. Now, I did show my drawing last week on the show, but Christy mm -hmm. had not finished hers yet because she had decided to do a clay rendering of how she viewed 
Now, don't worry if you're listening to this and not watching, because obviously we will have to put these photos <laughs> on our socials for you to reference. Mm -hmm, but Christy, mm -hmm. I'm really hoping, I know you've also done a drawing now, as there's been a few kind of maybe, um, I don't know what words you want to use, missteps, mishaps with the clay. <laughs> the, cl the clay didn't go like I planned. Am I showing the clay one first? I am would I doing love to see it. Now, I tried to base the photo off the clay thing so that... <laughs> So it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, there, There's a lot of problems with them, I know, but it was my first and last clay attempt. Uh, I've chosen to call him Roy. <laughs> nice. Everybody meet Roy. Oh, he's cute. This turned I, out a lot better than I thought. Like, just oh, give it I your... mean, it didn't work out. <laughs> we have a lot well. of problems. But uh, yeah. I didn't expect like four arms. That's cute. Yeah, I think part of it was I made his torso really big and then I put one set of arms and I was like, well, now he just looks like a penguin. And so I had to do some some changes. So based on that, yeah, um, I've I've gone for this. Oh my God, it's so good. But then I also decided that... Uh, because you are like, oh, they absolutely exist and they've absolutely been to our planet that uh, he did come to our planet and he loves it. <laughs> He's got an I heart earth hat. He oh does. my God, that's adorable. Now I did say yeah. last week that I was thinking of redoing mine in paint. I'm going to be honest with you. No, I love it too much. I've left him. Again, I love him. these, and what's interesting is our two drawings, these two look, I'll say it, like they could be cousins. Cousins. Meow, meow, bitch. Wow. It's probably safe to say Hatches. Loose and Buzzy. Loose and Buzzy is going to be in the his house. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting for whatever the fuck this episode was. <laughs> Magic. I'm That's what it was. Christy Oxborough. Magician. Yeah. I also. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Did you want to say goodbye? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs>